Hi, I'm Brian Van. And I'm Aubrey. Today we're going to show you how to replace brake pads the right way. Well, kind of the right way. All right. What kind of bike do you have, Aubrey? Oh, nine R6. How many miles do you have on it? About 10,000. Okay. Aubrey rides primarily on the racetrack with our friends from Sport Bike Track Time. And you're in which group now? Intermediate. And if I remember right, you're looking to move up this year, too. Hopefully to advance. Nice. And smoke your husband. Yes. That just got said. We never okay. been in. That's pretty sweet. I have lots of good attitude to have. So what we're going to do today is, given the group that she's riding in right now, okay, the motorcycle she has, we're going to install CL, which is Carbon Lorraine, formerly Carbon Lorraine, XBK5 brake pads on the front, and we're going to do the RX3 brake pads on the rear. This is really the only compound available for the rear, okay? It's all that you need back there. For the front, the XBK5 is, is kind of a super sport pad. It's going to be good for street riding, okay? And it's going to be good for racetrack duty, too. And you need to kind of gauge this depending on what group you're riding in. If you were more in the advanced group towards the front of the advanced group, I'd put you in some race pads from, from CL or from Vezra or something like that. But this pad should serve you very well on this motorcycle. They work without a whole lot of heat, so when you go out there right away, they're going to be good and effective, right? And they last a long time. Good, linear feel. Okay, so okay. It's, the initial bite's not so crazy, it upsets the chassis of the bike. Okay. And that's important. When we change the brake pads, okay, we're going to show you the, the proper procedure. And I'm going to qualify this whole thing and say that th this is how we service our motorcycles here. Okay, in no way, shape, or form does this supersede what you will find in your owner's manual. If you do not feel comfortable servicing your own motorcycle, please take it to a licensed, qualified technician. Okay, this isn't necessarily a how-to video. I've got to love legalese. This is us showing you what we do when we work on our own bikes. When we replace the brake pads, okay, we're going to flush out the brake system, put some new Motul RBF 600 in there, right? We're going to put three speed bleeders in. It's going to help us to change the brake fluid quickly. The things that we need to do this job are, obviously, brake pads, front and rear. We're going to use a speed bleeder recovery bag and hose. It makes the whole brake bleeding thing no mess, right? We need brake fluid. We need brake cleaner. We've got our speed bleeders. I like to keep handy a roll of paper towel, and some Windex or just, just some you know water-based type solvent. If you get a little brake fluid on your body work, your painted stuff, you're going to want to hurry up, spray it off, wipe it off so it doesn't have time to damage the paint. For tools on the R6, what I have pulled, I've got a toothbrush we're going to use to scrub the caliper pistons. Key, okay? I've got a couple of screwdrivers here, a big flat blade, I've got a smaller Phillips, a medium flat blade, some needle nose pliers, side cutters, 8 millimeter wrench, 3 8 ratchet and a 12 millimeter socket and that'll be enough to do this whole job. Okay, now we're going to change the brake pads on the rear caliper just like we did on the front. Once again, a nice clean safety wire job back here. Always a great idea for sure. We're going to just go ahead and cut this stuff off. Remove the caliper. We're going to go through the whole procedure that we did up in front. We're going to clean the caliper piston really good. Before we push it back in the bar, we're going to use the bag, right? We're going to open the bleeder screw, force the fluid into there so we don't push anything back up in the master cylinder. You don't ever want to do that. Service in the rear is going to be just a little bit different, okay, than doing the front. What we have here on the rear is we've got a 14 millimeter. This is a guide pin, okay? And there's, there's a, a lube point here, too, that you need to make sure that you get lubricated keeps the back brake working well. And then you have the retaining pin here for the brake pads. This is a flat blade here. I'm going to go ahead and loosen that up. Now we'll go ahead and pull the caliper. One more bolt to get the caliper off. Okay, uh, the first thing you're going to notice here is these brake pads are absolutely fine. Realistically, for most riders out there, these things are going to rot off your motorcycle before you're ever going to wear them out. Aubrey, have you ever actually used this back brake? I don't think so, no. Yeah, I, think that's, I think that's the case with most of us, okay? In this video, do these necessarily need to be changed? Okay, probably not, right? The bike's still pretty new. It's got 10,000 miles on them. They are probably about as thick as they were the day they came off the assembly line. 
We're going to show you how to do this anyways, just in case your bike needs new brake pads in the back. Now that we've got the caliper off the motorcycle, we're going to go ahead and pull the brake pad retaining pin. That is the lock for the retaining pin, okay? And then the inside portion is held on with a five millimeter Allen. Obviously, they need to make sure that the retaining pin is not gonna come out on its own, right? And that is why you have kind of a two-stage pin. Undo that like so. We're going to reuse the shims on these pads, okay? There's a couple of different schools of thought why they use these. You know, one of the things is, is it can definitely keep the noise down, right? And anytime you can have your brakes operating quietly, that's a good thing. So we're just going to pull these off and simply transfer these over to the new pads. Okay, same situation as we did in the front. We're going to go ahead and clean the caliper piston, right? Get it a little bit wet. Get Gibson's toothbrush in here. And there's really not as much debris back here because, you know, this brake just doesn't see the same kind of service, right? The same kind of load that we do in the front because she never uses it. And that's pretty much the case with most people. So the cleanup back here is really pretty minimal. Now that we've accomplished that, we're going to go ahead and push the piston back, right? Let's get our wrench, recovery bag. This recovery bag is really money well spent. It's something that you can, you can kind of use over and over again, and it makes for a really clean job. Screw is open. I'm going to grab the piston with my fingers and just push it right back using only hand pressure. I didn't have to push it back very far because it hadn't really come out that far, right? Because the brake pads are essentially brand new. Like so. Now what we want to do is there's another procedure that we need to do on this. This guide pin here, right? We need to make sure that that floats freely, okay? And if nothing else, that alone is a good reason to get in here and service these brakes is to keep this well lubricated and this guide pin here as well, okay? Okay, now what we need to do is we need to get the guide pin to come out. Kind of grab the seal here, right, with your fingers and pull it off the retaining lip and then push it through like so and then I'm just going to kind of let it hang there on the other end. I have a tool that I, I made that I used to use when I did brakes in the industry before, right? What it is, it's, it's a Phillips screwdriver. I cut the tip off and just rounded it off. Put just a little bit of silicone on there, put it in there, and wipe it around. It just takes a thin coating. It's kind of a thin maintenance coating to keep this stuff moving real nice. Do the same up here for the upper guide pin. Like so, just kind of work it around in a circular motion like that. Need to get this guide pin to come back through. do is you want to make sure that both ends of that seal okay are located in the groove like so and see how freely that moves back and forth now let's go ahead and take our brake pads like so we've already prepped them pistons are already pushed back let's go ahead and slide those in place let's grab the first part of our retaining pin slide it through both pads let's grab our allen We're going to get this snug right now. We're not going to go ahead and tighten it up all the way. It's a lot easier to do that when it's on the motorcycle, okay? You'll be able to put proper torque on it. You want to make sure that you've got good torque on this so that it does not come loose, okay? Go ahead and slide that on there. The brake pads, the bottom portion of this brake pad right here needs to ride on this, okay? So when you're getting this all in there, sure that that is on that ledge like so okay and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the lowermost bolt in first 
like so. And now what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to push down on the caliper a little bit because remember we've got a brake pad retainer up here, a retainer clip, spring clip that puts some pressure on the pad so now it's pushing the caliper out. Push down, wiggle that through, and now we're ready to tighten everything back up. Different than the front, okay, the rear, the alignment of the caliper, this caliper floats in those lubricated bushings, okay, so we're, we don't need to leave the bolts loose now and kind of and kind of sync everything up. We can just go ahead and basically torque this stuff down and then remember they did a nice safety wire job on that. We're going to go ahead and of course redo that to make sure that everything stays into place as it should. Tighten the lower one, tighten the upper one. If you noticed, I mean, I'm not wrenching on this as hard as I can. There are torque specs in your owner's, ma you know, in your service manual. And if you don't feel comfortable, you know, judging the torque on your own, please refer to that manual. Okay, I've fixed things for a long time, and I have a pretty good idea of what proper torque for something like this is. And also keep in mind, we've got safety wire that's going to hold this into place. My point is, you don't need to get on these bolts as hard as you can. Okay, oftentimes you're threading this into aluminum. Okay, you've got a steel bolt into an aluminum fixture. If you push on it too hard and over torque it, you're going to damage it. Okay, now we're going to tighten down the retaining pin. First order is go ahead and snug up the Allen. Okay, now we're going to get the, the retainer. You could even go as far as if you chose to, to maybe put just a tickle of blue Loctite on this second stage. I really don't think it's necessary. Just snug that up like so, and you're good to go. Next up, we're going to install the speed bleeders in here. Okay, and essentially all we're doing there is removing the stock bleeder screw and threading in the speed bleeder. And what this is going to do, this is going to allow us to change the brake fluid like that. In order to be able to refill the fluid level on this Yamaha, we have to go ahead and remove the reservoir from the bike so that you can pull the cap. Okay. Same thing that we did on the front. Gonna go ahead and open the bleeder screw, which is now the new speed bleeder. Okay. Install the hose, keep an eye on the fluid level. Clearly see the level coming down. Okay, pause there, refill the fluid, and then repeat. Okay, I've got the rear blood. You can see we've got good clean fluid in there. Here is the fluid that we pulled from the bike, okay, kept nice and neatly in this recovery bag. The fluid in the front is filled. There is going to be an upper and a lower level line. Now that we have brand new brake pads in here, we've changed the fluid, you're going to want to get it right to the upper line. I've done the same on the rear. You do not ever want to overfill your brake fluid, okay? Realistically, if you see your brake fluid level low or looking low, you need some kind of service. You probably need pads. You might have a leak. It's definitely something you want to address. We'll check the lever up front. Perfect. It's good and firm. Pedal in the back, same way. Perfect. Using the speed bleeders makes getting all the air out of the system very, very easy. This was a pretty simple service because we never really introduced any air to the system. We never opened the hydraulic system per se and filled it full of air. One of the last things that I'll do typically on one of my race bikes is once I'm totally done with a job and I've got the motorcycle where it's going to sit on a stand for a day or so or it's going to be in a trailer, you know, heading out of state to go race, to go ride, is I will take the brake lever and I will put a zip tie with the brake applied and what that does is it kind of holds the hydraulic system open if there's any air bubbles the other side of the master cylinder as you're traveling or the bike is sitting they'll kind of naturally work their way to the top past the master cylinder and the air will end up on the other side of the brake fluid and you'll have a perfect lever that's it this is a simple brake pad installation. Once again, this is for entertainment purposes only. In no way, shape, or form does this take place of a service manual. If you are not comfortable working on your own motorcycle, take it in and have a licensed technician work on it. Brakes are important. If they don't work right, you can get hurt. 
All right, that's it. Brake pads front and back. They are done. They are on. Bike loaded in trailer. Love the trailer restraints from Pitbull. I've got those two. They're great. It's the only way to haul a bike, isn't it? Right. What I need to tell you this is this now, okay? This thing is not going to stop as good as it did when you brought it here. Okay, and that doesn't make sense because you have brand new brakes front and back, right? Right. I need you to break those pads in, okay? And on the racetrack, essentially, that's going to happen in the first couple of laps. Go out and give yourself extra stopping distance, okay? Use the brakes lightly. Don't put yourself in a hammer down, high pressure braking situation. How the brakes work is once the friction material from the pad transfers to the rotor, you essentially think of it as brake pad on brake pad almost. You need some of that material from the pad onto the rotor from to work properly. Once that happens, you're going to feel them starting to bite more and more, stop better and better, and it happens in a very narrow window of time. If you don't do that properly, you can overheat the brakes, damage the new pads, even damage your rotors, or if it won't stop and you put yourself in a high pressure situation, you fall down. <laughs> that would suck, okay? Those of you on the street, same thing. You do this service to your motorcycle, right? I want you to take it out there. I want you to ride it easy at first. Give yourself a lot of extra stopping distance. Break these things in. It happens in a narrow window of time, but if you don't do it, you're gonna wreck everything you did and possibly damage more. It's really important you do that. That's it, we're done. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. the loaner. I'm Brian Van. Aubrey Stewart. Signing off.